All right, I'll get started. So for question one, we're given that a ball bearing is moving uh, in a circular motion on a horizontal disc. And at the current instant, the ball bearing is 2.3 inches away from the origin or the center of the disc. And it's traveling at a velocity of 4.3 inches uh, per second towards the edge of the disc and an acceleration of 4.6 inches per second squared. And we can tell from the units here that the, they are talking about the radial velocity and acceleration. And we are also given a theta double dot, which would be the angular acceleration. And they're telling us that the total acceleration, which is the uh, angular acceleration plus radial acceleration, is equal to zero. So we're going to operate on those assumptions. Going, oh, what happened? Uh, wait, how did I do that? Okay. So, yeah, I wrote down all the givens again, so you can see that the distance in green is 2.3. We have r dot and r double dot, and, yeah, the angular acceleration, uh, theta double dot is zero. So we're trying to find the angu uh, angular velocity theta dot at, for the total acceleration to be equal to zero. So the process that I use is um, going all through uh, po polar coordinates because uh, this is a rotating system. So it's easier to uh, go in terms of radius and angle rather than a Cartesian coordinate system. And uh, the total acceleration, again, is equal to uh, AR plus AT, or A radial uh, plus A tangent, which is the same thing as, that I mentioned earlier. And so A radial uh, is derived from the, the derivative of R, just R. So the, deri the derivative of radius is the radial velocity. And so you can use that to also find the radial acceleration by double derivative, uh, doing a double derivative, and that would be the formula up there. And plugging in the numbers that they gave us, we get that uh, theta dot is root two radians per second. And we can also double check this by plugging in the, the other component of total acceleration, which is the angular acceleration. And here we can see that the angular acceleration that we are given the zero, or for the total to be equal to zero, that also has to be equal to zero. And a tangent, for that whole thing to be zero, that means that the radial velocity there times angular velocity times two equals zero. So if you plug in the number, you also get the same thing. And yeah, so angular velocity is equal to 1.41, or root two, radians per second. Good job. And so in terms of application, so in this problem we're given a very simple ball bearing. In reality, ball bearings have multiple balls and they're rotating on three different axes. So that's what a typical ball bearing would look like. And they're primarily used in air, uh, aircraft landing gear in the axles when the uh, wheels have to be lifted up during takeoff and then back down for the landing. So yeah, that's just one example of this problem, application of this problem. Great job. So my question is very similar. It's the same um, kind of situation, just in this case, we're trying to find when the acceleration will be zero what the, um, the radius will be. And so, if I do my rough sketch, like here's our ball bearing, it's rotating. My reference frame is our disc. Um, this I have as being the E hat R, and then I have this being e hat theta, positive, negative, positive, negative. So what we're given is that um, r is equal to 2.4. Ooh, 
let's see. Yeah, r is equal to 2.4, r dot is equal to 3.3 .3 inches per sec, and inches, and then r double dot equals 4.3 per sec squared. So then, knowing we want acceleration to be zero, we have a is equal to zero, which is equal to a r, E R plus A theta E theta hat. So then to break this up into the two pieces, we have um, it would be if we wrote it out R double dot minus R theta dot in E R plus R theta plus 2r dot theta. One of these is a theta dot, let's see. Theta dot. So then both the components have to be equal to zero. And since we have almost all these knowns, we want to solve this equation for, z or for theta dot. And we get theta dot is equal to um, 1.34 radians per second. Then we plug theta dot into this equation. Um, and for it to be zero, we have 2.4 theta plus times 1.34. Um, equals zero, and you solve for theta. Solving for theta, you're going to get negative 3.68 radians per second, but then it asks for the magnitude, so you just take the absolute value of that. Question. I put it all on the slide. So, uh, our question is talks about a Lockheed Martin F 35 Lightning, which we can have a picture of just for reference to see what it looks like. And this airplane is flying at 467 knots, but then the pilot is doing this maneuver where it pulls up with a radius of turn of 1.8 kilometers. And we're asked to find the load factor. We're also given a background on what load factor is. Well, basically, it's you, where you sum all the different acceleration components and you divide it by g, or gravitational constant, in order to get a non-dimensionalized value. Just to start off, I defined our reference frame, uh, x, y, and then the reference frame is going to be the Earth, e. You don't see the radius where we're turning up. Um, so based on this, we can split up the different components of acceleration. So because the airplane is originally moving uh, at 467 knots, just in a straight direction, that's only our tangential velocity. And so we know that there's no, not necessarily any acceleration in that x direction. Meanwhile, we do know that there's obviously going to be gravity acting in the y direction. So we can already list off that the acceleration component in the y direction is going to be the gravitational constant, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. And so the second component of acceleration comes from this change in direction where you're pulling upwards. Um, in our equation that we derived in class, we know that as, that's going to be the centripetal uh, acceleration. And so we can find that using the components that we're given. So we know velocity, that's what we're given, as 467 knots. So I want to keep everything in the same unit. So initially, I converted everything to meters per second uh, using these conversion factors here, where we have one hour is 3,600 seconds. Uh, one nautical mile is 1,852 meters. And so we can sort of convert that into meters per second, as well as convert the radius to meters as well. In order to get the acceleration, uh, I use equations that we knew from physics, uh, where tangential velocity is equal to the radius times the angular velocity, which we know as theta dot. And so if we, we can isolate, isolate that for theta dot to find to be velocity divided by the radius. Meanwhile, the angular acceleration, or uh, the radial component of acceleration, is found by multiplying radius times the angular velocity squared which we already found to be velocity over radius. And so algebraically, we can cancel out some factors to find the acceleration. 
to just be v squared over r. And then we can plug that in to get a com final component of 32.1 uh, meters per second squared, which I found out the units here. And of course, as we mentioned by the definition of a load factor, we just sum that up with gravity and divide by the gravitational constant to end up with the final load factor of 4.27. I also did this in MATLAB just to make sure that uh, the units are right and that the math or the calculations end up being correct. And we also end up with the same value of Okay, so in this question, we're looking at what would happen if an astronaut on the space station launched a wrench uh, inward radially towards the Earth. So the first thing that I did was to define uh, the Earth as a reference frame. You can see here in the image, um, I've defined my e, uh, theta dot, or e theta hat direction uh, to be pointing this way and then my ER hat direction to be pointing that, uh, that way. Uh, the, the way I drew it in this picture needs a little bit of updating because the sign convention is un, um, not quite conventional. Anyways, so we're given that the radius of the Earth is 6,378 6, kilometers. Um, and we're given that the space station is flying an additional distance of 418 kilometers above the Earth's surface. So when we add that up, that gives us uh, a total radius of, if we convert it to meters, we get 6,796,000 meters. And then we can use this information uh, to find the angular velocity theta dot because we're given the tangential velocity. So if we take our uh, tangential velocity, which is given to be 7.66 kilometers per second, and divide it by the amount of kilometers of radius that we have, uh, we calculate our theta dot to be 0.001127 radians per second. And then we are trying to find the, uh, we are trying to find the theta double dot in, um, I believe that's micro radians per second squared. And so we are going to make the assumption that the acceleration of the wrench in the theta hat direction is zero, which makes logical sense when we uh, consider that we're not given any information that would help us find um, find a non-zero acceleration in this direction, but also because from our kinetics intuition, we know that there wasn't any force that was accelerating the, uh, accelerating the wrench in the E theta hat direction. We know it's just being launched towards the Earth. So, we take a look at the formula for the uh, acceleration in the e theta hat direction, and we know that this is equal to, let's see, we have r times e theta double dot minus 2 r dot theta dot. Uh, and we're given, so we've calculated the theta dot, the Earth reference frame, and we're given that the the uh, radial velocity is 11 meters per second towards the Earth, and we're given the radius as well, which is what we calculated here. 
So if we set this equal to zero, we can solve for theta double dot. And then we just have to plug in our numbers and also convert to our micro radians per second squared. So if we plug in these numbers, Then we get our final answer to be 0 0.00365 micro radians per second squared. And then I also uh, wrote out my analytical work in MATLAB uh, to make sure that I plugged in all my numbers correctly based on the givens uh, and it checks out with the answer that I calculated by hand. Focus on the MATLAB. All right, so our question was at point P, um, we have it moving on a path of S equals C T cubed, where the constant is 0.7 feet per second cubed. So as seen over here, at 2.3 seconds, the magnitude is 18 feet per second squared. And we want to find the radius of the curvature at that point. So first, I started with taking the s and deriving it to get the velocity, which is 2.1 and then time squared. And then when I plug in the time, which is at 2.3 seconds, we get 11.109 feet per second. Again, I derived the velocity to get the acceleration tangential, and I got 4.2 t. And when you plug in at the time of 2.3 seconds, it equates to 9.66 feet per second squared. So with the equation of acceleration times at the magnitude squared equals acceleration of the radius squared plus acceleration of the tangential squared, we get the velocity squared over r, and that to the squared as well, plus the acceleration tangential, which we found squared. So that gives us 18 feet per second squared is equivalent to the 11.109 feet per second squared over r. And then this is all squared, plus the a tangential, which we found to be 9.6 feet per second squared. And then we solve this for r. So first, I solved each of these squares to get the correct numbers. And then I took the magnitude and subtracted it by the tangential for the acceleration and ended up with 230.68 feet squared per second cube uh, to the fourth power. And that's equivalent to the A radius, which at this point is 1.123.41 feet per second squared um, to the squared power over R squared. So solve for R squared by moving r over and dividing this by 230. And this gives us r squared equals 15,230 feet per second cubed or to the fourth, and then divided by 230.68 feet squared to the fourth. And then I square root that, and it's positive. So we get r is equivalent to 8.13 inch foot. Thank you.
There's a picture now. The, the picture? I changed. Oh, yeah, you should refresh. Refresh this. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. Yeah, so my my question was, at a certain instant, the magnitude, velocity, and acceleration at a point shown below are V, which is the value given, is 2.1 meters per second, then acceleration, which is 38.6 meters per second. And uh, it said the acceleration uh, is acting downward at an angle of 23.9 degrees, uh, as shown in the figure. And at this instant, fi find uh, D modulus of v by dt in meters per second squared uh, and it's also one hint that gives here it's s is the double derivative uh, 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 d modulus of v by dt is the double derivation uh, so this is kind of like a trajectory of path where v v is going this way and acceleration is coming down so the formula for that would be minus uh, a cos uh, theta which would be minus of 38.6 meters per second squared, uh, which is A, uh, times cos of 23.9, which is the theta, where my reference frame, if you can see the reference frame that I've taken, is kind of downward. And it, it's, it makes my problem much easier if I, I, I take that kind of reference frame. From there, if I just do a simple calculation, I get it to be 35.29. And this is this is like a normal trajectory path of a rocket. I just uh, like I just thought of it and wanted to add a picture. So. Okay, so I had basically the exact same question as they looked at only this time. I'm, lo I'm looking to find the radius of the curvature in the path. And I am kind of realized that I might not have approached this problem in the correct way, but from, I guess if I were to sort of redo it, I would identify that the like, the formula for acceleration and within the frame of reference that we derived in class consisted of both the tangential and the um, centripetal um, components. When looking at the diagram, again, it's the same, same diagram as the look had shown in the previous slide, but I, I can just draw it again. Um, we have this body that's moving along a curved path. We, have, we see that it has this tangential velocity here and it has an acceleration that is sort of angled to it at this angle theta. So again, we can split, it, we can split this um, acceleration into components. We see that there is a tangential acceleration and, a and one that is centripetal, the center-seeking um, component of acceleration. And since we know that the expression for centripetal acceleration includes the radius, and since we're given the tangential velocity, it ends up being a pretty simple problem to solve. Um, but I think if I might have taken all the steps from the beginning, maybe that would have been a better way of doing the problem. But um, that's essentially all I did. Can you use the microphone? Oh, 
sorry. Yes. So we're treating um, the ABC as constant coefficients, and then um, we're taking the uh, magnitude using the known function, and so that's just um, doing the square root of the square of the sum of these products, and then we differentiate that magnitude to get um, the derivative of the magnitude of the um, velocity uh, vector. And I, an important finding that uh, I realized was that's not exactly the same as um, the magnitude of the derivative of the velocity vector. It's, it's a little bit different. Um, and that came out to this uh, long uh, result right here. And then we plug in the five sec uh, point 0.5 seconds, and then we get a value of 5.9212. Thank you.